Hello again. As you may or may not know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and INE has invited me down here to Durham, North Carolina to interview technology professionals in the area to talk about their careers and how they got to where they are. Right now, I'm with John Foley, Associate Director of IT at Chimerix Incorporated. Chimerix. Chimerix. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> so you're an Associate Director of IT at Chimerix. What what is an associate? Because I know director of IT, and I know manager. What's an associate director of IT? Well, I was manager of IT, and uh, <laughs> they, they wanted to move me up, but they didn't want to make me director of IT just yet, so they had to make me just associate. So I'm, I'm, I'm working my way up. You're working your way up. Okay, okay. So it's more like... Uh, because it's always interesting. Everybody always asks about these titles. Like they think it's like you know a CCIE or an MCSE. Like these titles are very specific. But this is more. It's a title that they gave you to to fit you in the. Slot. Yeah, I'm still doing the same job. You know, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, a little bit of everything. But uh, you know, they wanted to to show that they appreciated me being there. So yeah. I can appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, that works. So how did you get into IT way back when? Were you you said you're doing like pizza like. Something? Yeah, I used to be. Uh, I used to deliver pizzas, work oh, as an assistant manager for a pizza restaurant, and yeah. uh, uh, my dad sent me back to school. I, really? I had always liked computers. I grew up with an Apple II Plus. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I got into college, started out as computer science, and okay, yeah. didn't finish, and wound up working in restaurants as a manager. And uh, my dad sent me back to school. He said, "Hey, you know." Uh, this is something that you need to learn, and uh, that was the beginning of, towards the beginning of networking back yeah. in, uh, it would be the 90s, yes, yes. Um, and Novell Networks, and I, I learned a lot of, uh, you know, I went back to class at night when yeah. I wasn't working pizza, and, okay. and uh, picked that up, yeah. and then uh, just enjoyed it so much, I just built on it from there. So it says, though, you have your Bachelor of Arts in Asian Studies. Yeah, I have a Bachelor in Asian Studies. <laughs> and an MBA. <laughs> and the, the MBA, I understand. That one, but... Okay, so you're doing computer science, you drop out, then you go back. Where does the Asian well, Studies come in? I spent, I spent a long time working with... You know, working in networking, working in security, and, yeah. and I didn't need a degree huh, okay. to do that. Okay. Because... You know, I, I pursued the certifications and I could go in and, you know, show them with the certifications and the knowledge that I had yeah. that, you know, I could do the job and that didn't become a problem huh. until mm, roughly the last five years or so yeah, yeah. when it's been, there's been more of a focus on actually having some sort of degree. Okay. You know, there are a lot of places that won't consider you for anything if you don't have a degree. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. A lot of the bigger companies, uh, Verizon and others, yeah. um, that's what they wanted was some degree, hmm. some kind of degree. Yeah. So I figured it was about time for me to go back to school yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, I wanted to do something I like. Yeah. So I went back and finished in Asian studies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, if anything it helps, because yeah, okay. at least when the Chinese malware comes in, I can read it. Oh, okay. So there's always that plus. That's interesting. So you can actually read Chinese then. I, I can read a little Chinese, yeah. Does that, I mean, because we keep hearing that China's taking over everything. Does that actually help you? I mean, I mean, it's cute to say, but does it actually ever come into being useful? No, it really doesn't. I mean, oh, really? we don't okay. get a lot of Chinese malware. Oh, yeah. I mean, most, and most everything's written, it, it's code, so it'll yeah. translate okay. as best as it knows how. But, you know, um, it's more useful when I want to go shopping at yeah. Alibaba and yeah, yeah. you know find something that uh, we can't find here. Yeah. So. Well, I've noticed that like with uh, like when I used to order hardware and things, like it started getting just simply drop shipped out of Hong Kong. Like right. It was it wasn't even getting shipped out of the U.S. anymore. It was getting FedEx directly from there. So then, okay, so you're getting so. So you're doing your computer science degree, and then you go back to college again. And then you stopped going to college, and then you just recently finished up. Is that the deal? Or... I wasn't uh, a good student. Let's say I, was, okay. I had a little too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I got okay. I got kicked out of school. Yeah. Oh. Well. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I wound up doing. That's how I wound up doing restaurant work. <laughs> ah, yeah, so um, you know, 
then I wound up, I wanted to go back and finish. And yeah. so I went back and finished and finished that degree. And, and since I was still uh, doing a lot of that, yeah. um, I figured I might as well continue. And so I finished the MBA oh, so you to just, just kind of round it out and um, give me a little bit more of the business understanding. So is there any advice you can give on, you know, because I mean, a lot of people do kick, get kicked out or don't make right. it their first time. Is there any like realistic advice on to, to on how to keep going or maybe to put on, like, do you feel like you should have put off for an extra year or two or? You, you know, when, when you, everything changes once you get kicked out and you got to pay for things yourself. <laughs> ah, it really okay. does. Yeah. You know, and I was working 40 hours a week yeah. uh, okay. doing landscape work yeah. uh, okay. outside in the sun all day and then, you know, wind up going to school at night. Okay. Yeah. So just to finish the two-year degree, yeah. which I finished in four years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know... I think if you just have to push through, you have to, you know, if, if it's something that you want to do, you got to make the time for it. Okay. Uh, you know, I've, I've spent most of, uh, I guess I've spent most of my life working 40 hours a week yeah. and doing everything else at night. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's difficult, but, you know, there, there's always a reward to it. And, yeah. you know, I get to do, now I get to do the stuff that I like to do and, yeah. you know, it, and it pays well. I can't complain. Yeah. So then you went straight then into your MBA. So what was your decision on the MBA? So if you because if you're in IT already, you know you like IT. Like right. why not a master's in information systems or one of these other? Why why do you go for the MBA? Well, you know, I I, I have a lot of experience in computers and networks and everything else. Yeah. And you know, the Asian studies is one degree. It's a arts degree. Yeah. And then. You know, I could have done an MIS, but I wanted more of the business background because I, I figured it, if at some point that I wanted to do management yeah. or I was going to be pushed towards management, I might as well have the, the skills that were associated with it to back it up. Okay. And, you know, I spent a lot of time, uh, my whole life I've been technical. <laughs> you know, I have, haven't had to manage people as much yeah. or manage, you know, an, a budget or any of the rest of those things or understand those moving parts of of working in IT yeah. that you know that someone as IT manager or you know a director of IT would have so the the MBA was more to go back and and learn those other skills that I didn't have hmm. so that yeah. you know even if I don't use them yeah. at least I understand you know when my boss says hey this is our budget yeah. you know how do we work through that how do we account for all the things when accounting comes back and says, hey, we need to, you know, we need to depreciate all of these assets. What does that actually mean for me? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. So then it says here, your first job, so your inter-networking, inter-network engineering? That was one of my, there's some other ones before that, but that was <laughs> oh, my first yeah. one in North Carolina was inter-network engineering. Okay, yeah. And that was out of Charlotte, and we did a lot of, and that was primarily Cisco and Microsoft. Huh, okay. And, uh, you know, I, at, they hired me because uh, I had taken a couple of the Cisco classes and passed yeah. the tests oh, okay, yeah. that were associated with them. Yep. And uh, they, they hired me up here. Uh, okay. I moved up from Florida to take that job. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And it worked out real well. It was uh, consulting work. It was more go out and do a project. Yeah. You know, here's the amount of time you get to, to do it. But it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Was there anything you learned, like being your first job, was there something, because you were there for about three years, was there anything specific you remember from doing that, like, you know, lessons learned, did you do anything stupid, did you do anything smart that, you know, you'd, you'd tell people to do? There's always one thing stupid and there's always one thing smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll start with the smart one and then we'll move on. There we go. The, the smart one, you know, is, uh, you know, just when you're dealing in IT, no matter what it is, no matter what the mistake is, no matter whose fault it is, yeah. you, ha you just have to accept it and move forward. Yeah. Um, you know, I can remember being told that, you know, I didn't deliver the client the documentation that he was expecting to have okay. at the time that he was expecting to have it. Yeah. And so he had an issue and he didn't have the documentation. Okay. Yeah. That's what my boss came back and told me. And, you know, 
And, you know, I, I told my boss, I said, yep, you're right. Maybe I didn't deliver it to him. Hmm. Let me go fix it right now. Okay. I went, I took care of it. You know, it turned out that I had delivered the documentation. I delivered it to <laughs> the, the clients, one of the, one of the other people who had worked for, that worked with the client. Yeah. But, you know, just accepting that responsibility, no matter what it is, you know, if there's a mistake that, that's made, yeah. you just have to own up to it. You don't hide it. You don't, you know, ignore it. Yeah. You, you do whatever it is to fix it, even if it's not yours. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah. If, if you know what can be done to resolve it, because it's all about making sure that everything works in yeah. IT. If, if you're doing your job right, no one knows who you are, <laughs> yeah, technically. Yeah. If you're the network engineer and, and the network's working like it's supposed to, they won't know about you. <laughs> but as soon as something goes wrong, they mm. will know your name yeah, yeah. and they will remember it. So, you know. But, doing, how, uh, but a lot of people get worried, like, if they take the blame for something, then that means their career is screwed up and then it's, it's all downhill from there. You know, you're going to make mistakes. Everybody's okay. going to make mistakes. And in IT, you're going to make you're going to make mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, it's a problem. Because okay. it means you're not you're not making more of an effort to do whatever it is you're doing. Okay. Yeah. You know, everybody I can say that I've shut down a router before, <laughs> you know, yeah, rem yeah. working remotely on a router and I've done something and realized I shouldn't have executed that command yeah. before and shut down a router and had to have somebody go out and, and you know, in a location not in the U.S. <laughs> and power it up again. <laughs> so, you know, those, those things are going to happen. Yeah. Um, the, the, quite, the real question comes, do you learn from those things? Yeah. You know, is it something that you can use to grow with yeah. and uh, become more successful? Um, to have a better understanding with. And it, it helps you when you're dealing with similar issues later that you know, oh, okay, I gotta take care here, yeah. you know, in these particular spots to make sure that things get done well. So then you were there, so you're there for like three years, and then you're a senior network administrator three at Trimeris? Yep, you get that one. No, but the funny part is, like, you look at the resume, so you, you're somewhere five, almost six years, and literally there's like nothing there. <laughs> like, what did you do there? <laughs> well, that was, a, that was a pharmaceutical company, and yeah. um, I took that job because I needed to be home. Hmm. Uh, I had a family situation where I, I had the kids and I had to take care of them. Hmm. So it means, you know, after school, I got to be home. Oh, okay, yeah. So doing consulting work isn't conducive to that. Okay, you, know, yeah. you know, there were some times... Uh, where you know you're working on something late at night because that's the window yeah. for IT, or you're you know you don't finish at five o'clock like everybody else does and go home. Yeah, um, that's just the job. So I took that position to be a little closer to home, okay. and uh, you know that was a that was a jack of all trades type position. Mm -hmm. You know, as a network administrator, you know you learn servers, you learn the network, you learn security, yeah. you learn all of those things, and yeah. so that was. That was my main focus there was, you know, learn all of the different moving components yeah. for a single company. Okay. And so you could actually have a job where you don't get called at midnight? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'd get called every once in a while, but, right, yeah, you know, it, it was a situation where I didn't have to get called. There were other people there, too, so I could send one of them. So that's always good. So then you're there, and then you get, so this is what everybody wants to know. Then you you have like the holy grail of jobs everybody in the world wants. Network security supervisor. So how were you qualified to get that job then? Because like everybody now wants that security designation. So how did, how, did you, how did you get to be a security professional? Towards the last couple of years at uh, Trimeris, yeah. um, we knew that the company was going to shut down. Huh. The, yeah. They had a drug on the market, but the board of directors decided that... Uh, they didn't want to do any more with the company. So they basically closed down the company. So mm -hmm. I spent the last year of my time there yeah. um, really learning um, the other skills that I had let go. By, you know, you work in one position, yeah. sometimes you, you just do what you need to do. You don't pick up the other certifications. You don't pick up, 
you know, the newer skills that um, you might need. Yeah. So I spent, you know, I spent time going back and learning, learning Cisco okay. uh, again and picking up uh, CISSP, CISA, okay. you know, all of those certifications. I had had them before, but I went back and took the tests again. Hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I picked up other things that were more security focused. Okay. Um, you know, at the time I was working on Cisco security, yeah. firewalls and, you know, picking uh, material from I&E and yeah. other providers and, and just really running through that stuff. And so that, that was, uh, you know, at the time I did digital forensics. Hmm. Uh, I took a digital forensics class and I liked yeah. that stuff and yeah. started working on that. And, and uh, you know, network security supervisor was more network, ser network supervisor. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, the experience that I had had, um, you know, as a network administrator yeah. helped me out there because, you know, it was still applications. You know, it was the antivirus. Yeah. And it was how do we do patch management yeah. and not just securing the network. And, you know, how do we, how do we look at it from a bigger picture? Hmm. Um, and then, and the reason I got that position is they, they needed somebody to come in. They had done an audit, a security audit, had okay. somebody come in and do a security audit, and, and they found some places that they wanted to fix. Okay. Yeah. And so they hired somebody in to help fix that, and that was me. Yeah. So. so were you, were you going for a security position? Were you like the next job I want security, or did this happen to be the job that you were hired? No, for? I was actually going for security because I could see that the. You know, everything was going that way. Okay. I had I had spent a lot of time in, in the network side, and you could see that security was starting to ramp up yeah. a lot quicker hmm. around that time. Okay. You know, we were having a lot more. Um, we had a lot of malware problems around that time. Yeah, yeah. A lot of viruses uh, that that caught everybody, and so there was a bigger focus. Huh. Okay. And so, so then, when in your career did you start? Because at this point, you're you're about eight, nine years in. So when did you start taking like the security certifications and the security training? That was about that time that I started doing all of the security, that, that kind of focus on security certifications and training. And, okay. um, you know, I, and I really liked it. It was a, yeah. having the network background yeah. um, made a bigger difference for security you know, it's easy to create a couple of rules on the firewall, but if you actually understand why you're creating those rules, yeah. where, you know, when somebody says, you know, man in the middle attack, understanding what that actually means from a network side, yeah. how do we see it, yeah. it makes a bigger difference. So having that background, the, the network security was a, a natural progression from there. And then, so you're saying you did digital uh, forensics. And so again, that's another big buzzword. Did you actually do digital forensics? And like, what, what did that actually mean? In the Because I hear that a lot, like people want to do digital forensics. But then I talk with companies that have zero interest in paying for digital forensics. They're just like, give me, give me an excuse to fire that person. And you're like, well, we have a log that says they did it. Fine, good enough, they're fired. Like actual forensics, I haven't seen a lot of companies really want to get that far into it. And they really don't. They don't, they, okay. they don't want to find out what their employees are doing <laughs> a lot of the times. Yeah, it's yeah. usually when there's a problem that they come back and say, you know, find out what, what this person's done. And I've yeah. gotten those. And that was, mm -hmm. that was part of it was I took the class and I liked, what, I liked learning that how you could read information off the hard drive yeah, and yeah. you know that when you delete things that they're still still there just yeah. the pointer to it is missing yeah. and and while that that whole process has changed a lot over the last eight years and it's gotten easier and better and yeah. you know it, um, I don't see companies wanting to know all of that network yeah. your network forensics is a big thing but that's more you know, after we've had an incident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I've gotten requests to do, uh, when I was working at different places, I've gotten requests, hey, take this hard drive and tell me what they've been doing because yeah. we suspect he's been doing something. Yeah. And, and I've done those. And they're not easy things to do because, right, right, right. 
you know, there's a whole lot of liability there. There's yeah. a whole lot of, you know, what if you find something that you're not supposed to? And, and I've run into things that you probably shouldn't have been doing or yeah. people taking pictures that they probably shouldn't have been taking or going to places that they shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. Um, you know, one of, I got one of those jobs because they wanted to look at what some of the, somebody who was in the pr position prior to me was doing. Hmm. And okay. so they handed me his laptop and said, here, see what you can do with it. Okay, yeah. So. So then with that kind of thing, with you doing forensics, I was always nervous with that. It wasn't so bad was a, as, as a normal consultant because the person normally owned the computer. Normally the forensic, the recovery was they did something stupid. Um, but when you get in the corporate world, especially in the U.S., there's some really bizarre laws about like what, what pri like private information on somebody else's computer, and then if right. you recover it, you can be violated. You can run into some issues. Did you think about how to protect yourself from that? Did you get the company to sign something to say you're not liable or they'll it's, protect you? It's or? always important to make sure you have a clear mandate for yeah. those tasks that they're asking you to do. <laughs> yeah. That you go back and say to the lawyer, put it in writing okay, because yeah. you want it in writing. Yeah. You don't want somebody to come, your boss to come and say, here, do this laptop for me. And then you find out, well, he didn't have the permission to give you that laptop to do to yeah. begin with. Yeah. So yeah, that that's <laughs> yeah, always that was the big thing was making sure that I wasn't violating any laws yeah. doing it and and where do you stop? You know, yeah. if you find blank, yeah. what does that mean? Is it is it now something that I've got to stop the investigation because it's now a criminal investigation? Yeah. And how do we how do we deal with those types of issues? So, so how do you deal with that though? Because I mean, the, one of the problems you run into, as everybody complains about, and I will. I will admit, sometimes you have stupid managers. And so sometimes the stupid manager will tell you, yes, you have the right to do this, even when they, they don't have the... So like, who do you talk to or who do you try to fact check to make sure you do have the authority to do something? Well, if it's your manager, get it in writing from them. Get it in an right. email, okay. you know. Yeah. Even, it, email's good enough, yeah. okay. you know, for most things. Um, and if there's ever a question, you know, it's always the CEO or the, the company's lawyer. Yeah, okay. Those are the, the best places to go for, you know, yeah. finding out if you truly have, uh, you know, it, HR is a, a help, yeah. but, you know, ultimately it comes back to, does the lawyer know what's going on yeah. for the company? And if he does, uh, if he doesn't, he probably should, yeah, okay. because no matter what you're doing, the, the lawyer always needs to be involved. Yeah. So you're talking about you have your C C I S S P. You actually got a lot of stuff going on. So which, if somebody's starting for these security certifications, which is a, which is the best certification to go to go for then, if you're trying to figure out for security or such? Well, it, it a lot of it depends on what your focus is or what you think you'll be working on. Yeah. You know, if if it's going to be network security. You know, it's it's the CCNA security or yeah, okay. something network focused. Okay. Um, if it's a pure security one, like the CISSP, requires a lot of work in security yeah, okay. as one of the prerequisites to get in the CISSP. Oh. You know, then it's uh, look at some of the other ones that are available. Some yeah. of the, you know, um, there's plenty of other security certifications that are good. Yeah. Um, as things are growing, you know, cloud security is going to become big, yeah, yeah. if not already. Yeah. Um, you know, it it really depends on where you're working and what you what you what you want to do, what yeah. you like. So, how far into your career, if somebody wants to do security, because everybody, you know, they've got no ex two days experience and they want to become security professionals. When would you suggest that they start going for the security if they're interested in it? Should they do it from day one? Should they get five years experience? No, you, I would say start as soon as you can because it's going to change over the course of the time anyway. Okay. Um, it's not going to hurt you to start at the beginning and at, you know and spend an hour or two a night or a week, whatever it, whatever you can work out yeah. to learn the skills, get as much as you can to to read and. Yeah. You know, find the websites that everybody likes. Talk to the people who are doing that type of work now. 
okay. um, and ask them. There's plenty of meetup groups or other groups that are, you know, what are you, what are you reading? What do you what websites do you look at? Yeah. You know, where do you get your information from? Okay. And how do you keep track of it? And and just you know, spend the time, get get some labs that you can do, yeah. virtual labs are easy to do. Pick up some books, uh, electronic or physical, yeah. and uh, and go through them and see where you can, you know, work work on your own stuff, work on your own network, and yeah. how can you how can you make your your own network a little safer, your your own computer. Yeah. How many people who who have their own computer, you know also have admin rights as the default on their computer, you know, <laughs> yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah. Take away your admin rights and then try and do something and see how well you, see how well you can get along and, and really understand, you know, how that, how everything is affected by yeah. what you choose to do. So then you were doing the security. So you were with the one company and then you went to, Ver so you were with North Carolina Farm Bureau Insurance, but then you were able to go over to Verizon was there a reason for the switch? Like, did, was it a better, better job offer? Did you get more out of going? It was a better it? job offer, and it fit with the family. It, family you know, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was the bigger thing: is it fit with the family? Yeah. Um, Verizon was the security operations center, the SOC, oh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. and uh, that actually wound up being Knights. Ooh. <laughs> so did, did you know that? I going volunteered in? Uh -oh. to help somebody out. And two and a half years later, oh. uh, you know, but it was good because it gave me an opportunity to go back to school and finish. Oh, okay. And so, you know, I, I worked at night and yeah. came home, slept a couple hours, went to school, came back from class, yeah. went back to sleep for a couple more hours. And oh, all right. so, so, like, what kind of shift was that then? Uh, 10 to 7. 10 to 7, really? Yeah, yeah something like that. It gets hard right around three or four. <laughs> I would imagine. So that was that that was that was not the plan. That was just something. That wasn't the plan, but that was what worked out. And yeah, yeah. you know, it was good experience because um, working in the sock at night. Um, yeah. That's when everything gets done. I mean, interesting. Um, yeah. When no one when no one's working. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, typical yeah. IT. You can do everything when no one is there. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, you know, all of the brake fix things were done at night. Huh. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, rebuild a F5 load balancer yeah. at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rebuild a Cisco router or, you know, firewall. That was, yeah, it was at night. Huh. And yeah. uh, it was good experience because it was remote. Oh. So everything, there was no equipment within thousands of miles of where we were. Really? Oh, okay. So. You know, you might be working on a firewall in Orlando yeah. and a firewall in China. Huh. Oh, so okay. for different companies and banks. And you get, you get a lot of experience on a lot of different things. And, and that's why I was there, yeah. was uh, to build on uh, that experience and help, help out because I knew a lot of different things at that point. Okay. So you went from there to Lulu. Do you think about trying to get a different job at Verizon, or was was the Lulu.com a better? I was kind of limited in in where I could move up in Verizon. Really, I think it would be big enough. You'd have a lot of not without switching groups. Oh, really? Okay. So I would have had to move out of the security operations center and do some other function. Oh, okay. To move up, and so it just fit better. And uh, Lulu gave me a chance to try a startup. Yeah. Type of environment and a more internet focused company where everything is done on the internet. Because how old was Lulu? Because you're saying this is 2013. Because Lulu hasn't been around that long. Lulu's been around a long time, actually. Really? More it? than 10 years. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. So, yeah. but, it, you know, it's an internet company. So every, all their business is, is done online. Oh, okay. So yeah, it, yeah. It's, a, it's a new environment from what I was used to. Hmm. It's different than working in, say, you know, a regular company where you know you may not have that web sales focus yeah so did you find how did you find it as a bit so I mean especially I mean you went you went from Verizon which is as enterprise as enterprise to like Lulu which is more startup what, what was the culture like what was was there any issues that you ran into any things you were surprised with or happy with or it was a lot younger yeah. in type of environment okay. um, you know 
it has that more um, startup, you know, there's a ping pong table and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, basketball hoop and all, all those things. And, you know, having a more focus on open source software and, um, you know, more of a 24 by 7 environment as opposed to some of the other ones that I had worked in before yeah. where, you know, 8 to 5 is typical for everybody. And, yeah. um, it, it was fun to see and enjoy and, yeah. and get that experience. Um, react, you have to react a little differently when, when all of the business is online and, yeah. you know, you have to work in your windows at <laughs> very, very small windows yeah. to take an outage. So with, and going there is, you know, one, one, one thing, everybody has this idea that you work in computers and we all have the same career or whatever. And so I'd be curious, like, how did you feel as an IT person in one of these startup worlds? Because it's like, you know, the developers, especially developers in startup worlds, really have a whole different way of doing things than most IT folks. Like most IT folks and developers, they don't, it doesn't always go so well. Like, how did you... How did you feel as an IT person there? Did you feel like you were actually, because a lot of times like I've seen with some of these companies where like the IT, the uh, people that deal with the pipes aren't necessarily respected that much. It's just, this is the stuff that's supposed to work. We're doing with all the cool stuff. Like how did you feel on that kind of thing? I didn't get that as much, you know, because um, they'd been around a little while, so it was a little bit different. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, I, I could see that, yeah. yeah. You know that it, it's a little different. They like to do things in their own, their own way, yeah. and so I picked up more than one Nerf gun and fired a shot at them. <laughs> so, um, and then you go from there to all scripts. So you're only there for like a year, year and a half. Is there a reason you weren't there that long? Was there better opportunities? Or all scripts was more uh, that that was going to be a uh, security engineer. It was okay. it was straight security engineer. They were had a hosting unit they were building up, huh, okay. and so I was like the second engineer oh, yeah. in in the whole group, and um, you know putting together all of the security F5 and you know Imperva database monitoring and all of the all of the moving components that go with hosting a, something that's more um, mission. It, more mission critical. I mean, uh, you're talking uh, databases for hospitals, yeah, and yeah. electronic prescriptions. So it's stuff where there can't be any mistakes. There can't be any open holes. Yeah. You know, otherwise somebody gets a Vicodin prescription that's not supposed to. Things yeah. like that. So it was it was a, it was going to be a challenge. Yeah, yeah. But you were only there for like six months. Yeah, I didn't stay there because uh, I had my boss from Trimeris call yeah. me and say he he needed some help, oh, okay. and uh, it was a it was an opportunity I couldn't refuse. Oh, okay. um, he said uh, he he needed some help in there, and uh, there's a chance that uh, I can take over for him when he's gone. Oh. So, so did you feel sheepish at all? Because I mean, that's one of the big questions with people is like, you know, when when is it okay to leave a company? So six months, even in the tech world, that's pretty short. <laughs> that was really <laughs> short. Yeah, I felt bad about that because I'd never done that before. Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. but it was it was it was just an opportunity that I couldn't I couldn't put down. I mean, yeah. I gave my boss as much notice as I could and okay, yeah, said, yeah. you know, I was I was honest with him and yeah. said, you know, this is why it's not because of anything here. Yeah. Okay. You know, I I liked working there. Yeah. So, did you? Um, like, is there anything to, to make it easier if you're going to be, like, leaving especially that, that quickly? No, there's just, nothing that makes it easier. You, <laughs> you just, just got to suck it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Catch him on his way out the door so at least he has some, he can think about it for a little while before he comes back at you. Yeah, okay. So, like, if you're leaving a company like that, did you get a contract from the new company just to make sure? Because, like, some people will leave their job and then the next job doesn't come through. And then they feel like they burned the old bridge. And did do you get like a contract, like especially at your level? Do you get some, something in writing that they're actually going to hire you? I, yeah, you get an employment offer, okay. you know. Yeah. And in this case, yeah, it was something that I got in writing. So, yeah, okay. um, 
you know, that's always nice if you can. Yeah. It doesn't always come that way. But yeah. usually you get an offer letter and hopefully, you know, they'll honor it. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> And then, so you're actually a committee member at the EC Council, the Scheme Committee, and you've been that for five years. So how do you, because EC Council is kind of one of those things like you hear about, but you don't really understand that there's human beings behind it. You know, how do you become a committee member there? Well, I, I'd actually written some, some test questions for one of their certifications no, right. um, okay. through another group, yep. um, through Pearson, oh, okay. who, run, who was running their testing and uh, they saw I was certified had one of their certifications I had I had picked up the uh, one of the forensics ones okay and so they had asked me if I wanted to join they were putting together a group yeah. to uh, to get to give advice about uh, how to make the certification successful you know how should they proceed ask questions yeah. you know as a secondary resource in case someone Someone had an issue with the the test or, or the way that it was handled. No. Um, they'd have somebody else to to go th to that wasn't um, particularly an EC Council employee, yeah, right, um, yeah, but yeah. an outside outside group. Huh. Okay. So, do you enjoy doing that? Is that something that you would stick with because you've been there for five years? Is that something you would just do for your entire career, or? Yeah, it's always nice to to be able to one. It gives me a chance to give back. Yeah. You know, and help guide, um, you know, the, where I think the certification, give them advice on where, we've given them advice on where we think the certification should go. And, yeah. you know, hey, do you, you, you need to bring in this, these types of components okay. to make the test more valuable to everyone. You know, yeah. you, um, you see that with a lot of, a lot of the testing nowadays is more um, lab, has a lab component of some kind. Okay. Where you actually do something, yeah. you know, the old Cisco tests where you actually had to type a command, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know Microsoft where you actually had to do something like the drag and drop and all yeah, of that that yeah. gets. Um, but to bring in those components to make things, you know, because it's not enough to know what's in the book if you can't apply it. Okay. You, yeah. If you can, if you can actually show that you can do it, it makes it a lot easier to, to say that yeah, that's. That's good. Hmm, cool. And then, so if somebody does something like that, like how many hours a month does that take out of your life? It really doesn't take hardly any really? amount of my time. You know, All it's right. it's an hour or two uh, a quarter. An hour or two. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's, okay. it's really not much. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the the nice thing is we'll get invited to one of the conferences and we'll have one of our meetings there. Uh, so okay. a couple extra hours uh, yeah. to have a meeting once a year there. Mm -hmm. at one of the conferences and hey I get to go to the conference. So is that is that the kind of special benefit do you get? Do they pay for travel or anything? No, they don't pay for travel or anything, no, or but <laughs> you know, to be able to go to a conference for 2 days, hey, yeah. you know, that, that in itself is worthwhile. Yeah. It gives, you know, you get to meet other people, you get yeah. to you get to learn what what new things are are available. That's cool. So then so then you gave questions to Pearson for a test. How, how does that work? How did that happen? You can, you can sign up. You, you kind of put yourself in Pearson's system. And, yeah. and uh, I guess they, they asked me to, if I'd be willing to do it. They okay. found me and yeah. asked me, and so I was willing to do it. And I wrote some questions for them, and they came back, and they've asked me to write some stuff couple other times and yeah, that's cool. you know they'll give you a topic and say here's the material that we want you to do something on yeah. I, I you know the last time they asked me it was fire safety questions and fire safety <laughs> <questions>. <laughs> I'm okay. in IT <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, you're asking me which type of fire extinguisher to use and oh weird oh. yeah a little little extra research on those you know <laughs> that's cool right. and then so you were the other thing you've done is a QA reviewer at unnamed IT security training company. So, question and answer review or quality assurance review? Quality assurance. Quality assurance review. Yeah. So, what were you doing? What was that? Uh, what were you doing quality? That's, uh, you know, that company teaches a lot of uh, online courses. Okay. And so, it's, uh, 
you know, going through the online courses and making sure that the, the audio matches what the slide's supposed to be. The slides yeah. all look good. The, yeah, okay. You know, the instructor's not talking about something that they shouldn't be talking about or bad words or, you know, <laughs> finding all of that stuff and making, making it presentable to everybody. Huh. Oh, okay. So th that's always a challenge. But, you know, the nice thing about doing some of these things yeah. is usually you'll get access to the materials hmm. okay. or you'll get access to the courses. Yeah. So, you know, whenever possible, you know, look for those opportunities where you can be a beta tester or, oh, okay. you know, a reviewer, hmm. you know, help, help people. You know, there's, there's always the opportunity to review books and... Yeah. You know, if you have a skill set in a particular area and somebody's writing a book, that's, yeah. the, that's what you want to do. You can go back and review their books and you get to see what their material is. And <laughs> it's always fun. So with that was, that, was there some kind of posting you saw that you applied for or did they, they come to you? Or? They, asked, uh, they asked for some help. Um, okay. That was, uh, you know, I, I had taken a couple of classes from them and and so they came in and asked if uh, anybody wanted to do that. And so I was like, yeah, sure, I can do that. <laughs> you know, that, that can take a little more time. Yeah. But, you know, it's a, it's a situation where you also get paid, too. So oh. you can also get paid. Yeah, Paid's yeah. good. Paid, paid is always good. Okay, right, so with that, then you become the Associate Director of IT at... Oh, Chimerics. Chimerics, there we go. <laughs> I'm a computer guy. So, okay, so the associate director then. So, so how big is Chimerics? Chimerics is about 100 people right now. It's 100 people, okay. Um, and uh, there's, I anticipate it will be more than that within a year or two. Really? Like um, how many, like 1,000 people or 100? 300, 300, 400, 500. Really, okay. Um, you know, I'll, I'll know more here shortly. Oh, okay. <laughs> As we get closer to the June time frame, I'll know more. Yeah. But... Uh, you know, it is a smaller company, but the advantage is that, uh, you know, I'm in, in there to give them direction on network and security, make sure everything is running. Yeah. And I get the opportunity to craft the network and everything the way that I would like to see it. Okay. Um, yeah. to, to really apply the skills that I, and knowledge that I've learned over the years and, and put all of those things in practice. Um, so that that's the advantage. Yeah. So when you know you're going to be growing that like that, but you're not exactly sure how you're going to be growing, how do you how, how do you plan for that growth? Because like if you know you're if you know you need to build an infrastructure for 500 people, that's pretty easy. If you need to know you need to build an infrastructure for more than 300, less than a thousand. <laughs> That's because that nebulous, <laughs> yeah. yeah, very nebulous area that you you're, yeah. you're shooting for. You 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 do what you can. Okay. You size as much as you can yeah. because at some point, yeah, you're going to have to replace things. Yeah, there, yeah. There's just no way about it, and not a lot of companies are going to want to let you spend a half a million dollars <laughs> to scale for five thousand people yeah. right at the right at the outset. Yeah. Um, so. You know, you, you build as much as you can. Yeah, yeah. You, you look at things like virtualization and what, what can you do with virtualization? Yeah. How, you know, is it, a, is it a choice between taking the VMware Essentials license yeah. or taking the VMware Enterprise license? Yeah. You know, can you get away with going with the Enterprise license? Will they pay for it? Yeah. If they pay for it, then you're positioned to use that, yeah. you know. Scale your firewall as much as you can scale it. Um, don't pick the the lowest end firewall that you can get yeah. to make it work. You know, count on having to upgrade your bandwidth. Hmm. You know, don't put in something that you can't upgrade yeah. or replace. So, is there any way you, uh, I don't know, you butter up the C level executives to try to try to get them the, the equipment you need? I mean, is there? Like with me, back when I was a consultant, you know, whenever I knew there was going to be an issue, I'd, I'd start talking to them about nine months beforehand so that when I needed the thing, they would, they would actually suggest it themselves. Hey, why don't you buy that new server? Oh, oh okay. Like, is there any... There, that's always <laughs> good, yes. Uh, you know, it, and sometimes it's, it's 
you know, showing them what what another company their size is doing, oh, or okay. bringing them, you know, what's the topic of the month or yeah. the week. Okay. You know, um, malware is a big thing. Yeah. Uh, cryptoware, yeah, yeah. ransomware is a big thing. You yeah. know, if you if you hopefully your if you your CEO is important. Uh, in, informed enough to uh, notice security topics as yeah. they they'll they'll respond well when you bring them those things and say you know hey you know this is my concern yeah. this is where you should have the concerns as well hmm. you know and and let them let them drive the what can we do to get there and you see what you can get yeah. Yeah. you know so do you like for communicating with the higher ups then do you find it's better to do it one-on-one? -on -one? Do you try to do it in the, the weekly meeting? Like, how do you try to communicate some of this stuff so they understand what's going on? I'm fortunate that I have a, a level of management between me and the, uh, okay. and the CEO. But, yeah. you know, at the same time, she'll walk into my office and say, hey, you know, this is what we're doing next week. Yeah. Plan for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, you know... It, it's just whatever works. You, you never want to walk into a meeting not having prepped them ahead of time. Okay. Yeah. You know, you want to send them the information as much as possible. Yeah. Um, give, them the, give them the information. And then when you go in to talk, they've already got it. They've probably already reviewed it. They at least have an opinion okay. on it yeah. for you already. Yeah. Um, if you walk in there blind, the answer is probably going to be no. Because okay. it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a money decision at that point. Yeah, yeah. So prepare them, prep them, talk to them ahead of time, nine months if you have to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, just give them a heads up. So you're there and your plan is to be, you're the associate director of IT, so your plan is to be the director of IT. So then a company, especially a smaller company, what would be the difference between the director of IT and the CIO? And a lot of times there's not, there's not that kind of difference. Okay. Um, you know, that that is essentially a CIO type of position. My my current boss is now yeah. that type of position, but he was IT director before. Oh, okay. So um, it it's whether they want to recognize the the CIO type of position or whether they want to keep it at a a lower level. Hmm. Um, you know, as IT director in a small company, you are doing everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. You know, you're the engineer, you're the network engineer, you're the security engineer, you're the systems engineer, you're the database guy yeah. half the time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it just depends on what they want to do. So would you ever, I mean, because, I mean, all these titles are half made up, you know, most of the time. Would you ever push for a better title? Even if you don't get anything else, you know, not an extra dime of pay, not extra... Would you push for a CIO title just for your career? Would no. Would you ever do that now? And the reason, I'll, I'll tell you the reason is yeah. at some point there's a diminishing uh, return on that. Yeah. If you look at, there's a limited number of CIO positions, whereas, you know, uh, systems engineer <laughs> or network engineer, you can yeah. find thousands. Um, Really, once you reach that level and you try and push that level yeah. of a position, yeah, you're going to find it harder and harder to get a job. Interesting. So that okay. if you get up there, um, there's not a lot of turnover. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. unless something really bad happens. Yeah. Um, but you could go months or y year without having another job. At a CIO level, really, okay. you know, unless you're wanting to move, yeah. you know, willing to take in another city, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that you would have to give up in order to, you know, just move like that. Yeah. And when you reach that level, a lot of it is not, um, it's not what you can do; it's who you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, huh. you'll get, you'll get asked to be those types of positions because somebody knows who you are already. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So that's it, I would not have expected to, you don't, don't want that title. <laughs> no, there's, there's a limit there. You, yeah, yeah, you may yeah. want to get there eventually, but yeah. 
you know, it, it's a harder, it's a harder push. You got to be able to prepare to be out of work for a year. Can you do that? Uh, you know, most people can't afford to be out of work for a year. Yeah. So, so then with your career now, so you, I mean, if you add all this stuff up, you've been doing this for quite a while, then what is, I mean, you've only been here for like a year, but for like for you, like five years, what do you, what would your plan be for five years out? Where would you want to be? Something similar, you know, either where I'm at or somewhere else, depending on what happens. But, uh, you know, I'm reaching a point where the technical pieces get harder and harder to pick up. Okay. It, it, it's just, you know, that's just the facts of life. Yeah. You can only <laughs> shove so much into your brain before it starts rejecting. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, to, to really grow... Um, a group and be able to to mold a, a business the the IT function of a business yeah. you know having a background in in all these different areas allows me to see a bigger picture yeah. of things yeah. you know even as I was working as a network engineer you know yeah I have experience in Windows Server so I understand when somebody comes to me and says hey I'm having this problem yeah. I can go yeah that's not that's not a network problem that's a this server problem because you need to do this on the server yeah. you know that that rounded education so you know five years for me i expect to be able to you know i'm not going to give up the technical stuff no 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 no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> i'm going to get my hands in there every once in a while and yeah. and i and i do that all all day anyway but you know just to be able to to guide guide an organization like that and then with all of the places you are, so you worked in large companies, startup companies, smaller company, what do you think was the best company size for if you're an IT professional, you're trying to get ahead? Like, was there any type that you preferred? It wasn't so much the companies as much as the people. You know, it's okay. always finding the right people to work with. Yeah. You know, company size, um, you know, it was a lot easier to start off in a smaller company and get a lot of experience in a lot of areas yeah. because there's less people to do your function. Mm, okay. Yeah. You know, you're going to wind up doing more jobs. You're going to wind up doing networking. You're going to wind up doing security and, you know, maybe the web, yeah. the website or whatever else it is. You know, and then, and then, you know, you just decide whether you can take that opportunity in a large company and... Yeah be be a small piece of it yeah. you know and it just depends on what you feel like you might like yeah. um, some I like that everybody knows who I am I like that yeah. you know everybody can come see me and say hey you know I'm having this issue yeah. um, but in a bigger company you're not going to get that you're not going to get that the same kind of hands-on it may be that you're operating remote you may be in a cube all day yeah. you know you may not get the opportunity to walk out into the data center and put hands on equipment as much as you would in a smaller company. So you just have to determine what you like. What do you like? Okay. I like the hands on equipment. That's fair enough. So then I guess the final question would be, um, so what technology do you think over the next five years? What gets you excited? Where do you think the money is? Like what's, what would you focus on if you're still? <laughs> Clouds. Cloud's big. It's becoming bigger. OpenStack, yeah. um, the and the technologies that are similar to that, yeah. like Cisco ACI and and all of those components. Uh, virtualization is just continuing to explode yeah. as people that you know realize that we can do more with less. Yeah. And you know, hey, let's shrink everything down to one box. Yeah. Um, I think that's where everything's going. Security, you know, and and it's not just, you just got to have a really good understanding of all the pieces of the security. Yeah. You know, how can we do this and still keep the business running? Because you can lock it down as tight. I can lock it down tight, but yeah. then you can't do your <laughs> job and it kind of defeats the purpose. So. The safest computer is the one that's unplugged. Yeah, yeah <laughs> unplugged and unpowered. Yeah. So... So then with that, though, with security, since so much is going to the cloud, 
there's a lot of people that just feel the cloud for whatever reason is just inherent, inherently insecure. Like being somebody that's so focused on security, how, how do you feel AWS, Azure, any of this stuff? Do you feel it is more or less or the same as far as security is concerned? With other infrastructure? Yeah, there is that concern, at, you know, that this that the technology isn't as secure as it needs to be. Yeah. I think that's changing. Okay. I think the the with the focus on on uh, cloud security, you know, yeah. by Microsoft and Amazon, and I think it'll get a lot better. Okay. Um, well, do you think is it? Is it the concern is getting better or the technology is getting better? I think both. Okay. The technology is <laughs> getting better and, and people are becoming less concerned. Okay, as, yeah. as everything's going to move that way, appears to be moving that way anyway, you're not going to have a choice <laughs> yeah. at some point. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I think the technology is maturing enough that we're starting to get the focus on security. Okay. We're starting to get, you know, people to pay attention to, whereas you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, you could jump between AWS instances before, you know, yeah, yeah. on occasion. Um, you know, Amazon's starting to realize that, you know, cus big customers aren't going to want to see that. Yeah. They're going to lose those big customers unless they can really show that they're paying attention to those things. Hmm. Okay. So, I, I, I think security's getting there. You know, security comes after everything's up. Yeah. Okay. Usually. Yeah. So um, that's where we're at. Would you have any big heart attacks if they were trying, if uh, your company started moving things to AWS or Azure? Well, we are no. okay. yeah. to some degree, you know, the, the office products are all moving to the cloud. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be there. Yeah. You know, ex it's a lot easier to export, uh, support exchange out of the cloud when I don't have to worry about the server, yeah. Yeah. those types of things. So. It's moving that way. Are we going kicking and screaming? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. You know, there, there. You, you got to be able to relinquish control, and uh -huh. and that's hard yeah. for a lot of companies. Yeah. You know, and it's going to take a lot of people with a, a lot of expertise and knowing how to lock things down. That, yeah. Yeah. That's where the opportunity lies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Is there? If you want to become a cloud security expert, is there any particular training or certification for that? There probably is. I haven't yeah. looked yet. Yeah, okay. um, the the one thing I do know about is the, you know, the the ISC squared's got the cloud security oh, okay. yeah. course, and uh, as does ISACA. They both have a cloud cloud security cloud training. So with that, and you've got, you've got a whole pile of certifications here. Do those certific like once you start getting this many certifications, do they matter for getting a job or is it for your own pride? Yeah, it's more for my own pride. It's more <laughs> for your own pride, okay. Well, you got so many, many, like, I, I don't even like literally don't know what some of these are, so that's where. <laughs> it, it, it's a lot of fun, you know. It, I try and make sure that, you know, if I take a class and it's got a, a test associated with it, I, I take the test. Yeah, okay. You know, I, I don't want to waste that opportunity. Yeah. yeah, are there some that I don't particularly do? Sure. Yeah. You know, I don't do reverse engineering malware every day, but <laughs> yeah. I have the certification just because I know enough about it. Okay. Um, you know, and a lot of, a lot of it, it, it's all the same information, you know, yeah. half the information in one test is going to be in another, okay. you know, yeah. if having that understanding and that background helps. Yeah. Um, you know, the biggest things for, for me at this point were making sure that I had the degree to go with it. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. and, you know, that shows that, you know, that I've done, done the college stuff and, yeah. and the certifications show that I can do more than more than that. Would you ever go for a PhD? No. No, not even not even a question. No. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do another master's degree in something yeah, else, you know, something yeah. something that piques my interest that day, but yeah. you know, oh, pick up forensic <laughs> linguistics or something, you know, yeah, something go. odd and tack it on there and make it look good. Oh, cool, cool. Well, it was good talking to you today. Thanks. Yep. So, uh, this is John Foley, Associate Director of IT. Um, as always, enjoyed doing this interview and I'll see you guys in the next one.